Hey guys, how's it going? This is Matt from iOSbetas.com, here with a video today to help out all you Windows users who have been having problems recently. So what you're probably wondering is your main question if you're on Windows is, how do I use the .dmg file that I download from the website that will help me install the firmware? Now let me explore it by explaining what a .dmg file is. If you're on a Mac, .dmg stands for disk image, and any Mac computer in the world out there can instantly read that and open it up without a problem. And then once you double click on the .dmg file on a Mac, right inside is sitting your .ipsw, which is the actual iOS software file that you'll install on your device. However, if you're a Windows user, .gm .dmg files are not natively recognized, which means you're going to need a third-party application whether you already have it installed or don't yet have it installed to open up the .dmg file and extract the .ipsw file. Now, I'm going to give you guys a complete run through an example here, so sit tight with me and I'm going to try and explain this and alleviate as many problems as possible. The largest mistake that I see people making is they'll download their .dmg files. So you see it's right here. This is one just an example for the iPod Touch 4th generation and it's in .dmg and they go into iTunes and iTunes says I don't recognize this file. I can't put it on your iPod and they then panic and go into go into rename it and they think all right if I put .ipsw at the end it's automatically going to make it better. It's just going to switch it over. No harm no foul. Stop right there. That's incorrect. Unfortunately, you cannot just switch the extension. You can change this from .dmg to .ipsw. That will not work. If you've done that, I either suggest re-downloading the .dmg so you get a free, a fresh download, or to change it back to .dmg if you've already changed it to .ipsw because that is the incorrect way of doing. This will not work. What you're going to actually need to do is find an application, which I have one here with me today, that will extract the .ipsw from the .dmg. As you see right here, it's called Power ISO. So you're going to go to PowerISO.com, and this is freeware for what we need it to do. It's going to say that if you wish, you can buy it or whatnot, or you can pay for it, or you can go buy now. But all you need to do is go to PowerISO.com and click Download. And just to make note here, um, you'd click Run, whatever computer you're on. I'm actually running Windows 8 developer preview I'm on parallels desktop on my Mac so that's why I didn't feel like paying and Windows 8 developer preview is free right now because it's just in beta however this will work on Windows 7 Windows XP Windows Vista whatever you may have power ISO works across all these and I'm surprised it even works on Windows 8 which is very nice so we're gonna click view downloads or whatever I assume if you're a Windows user this isn't too funky to you I'm not normally but I've taught myself enough to know what I need to do for this so you're going to go ahead and you open up your downloads and you just are going to install it like you install any other file. You can choose where you want to install it. We'll just go, we'll put it on the desktop just for ease. Desktop, okay, install, give it a couple seconds, bam, there it is. Now you click next. What you want to do though is also make sure that on when you come with this menu that you scroll down to almost the very bottom and scroll up a little bit and check off .dmg. Again, those are the files that you've downloaded. You need to check off .dmg. Now you can turn on automatic auto mount on boot up. I didn't. I just turned them both off. Um, you can leave those two and then go ahead and click close. Now, when you do this, it's going to say, thanks for installing, congrats. You can go ahead, close out Internet Explorer, and here it is. So as you see right here, this was our originally .dmg file. So we're going to leave that alone for right now. Here is the Power ISO folder, which contains everything you need. Regardless of whether or not you actually put the folder on your desktop, you will also get the shortcut to the actual application. So that's kind of nice there, even if you install it somewhere deep in the files of your computer. So let's start. And if you've installed this correctly, the .dmg file you had on your desktop or anywhere else in your computer will be recognized in Power ISO. Remember, we checked off that box. So all you have to do now is it's fairly simple. Is Again, this is still a .dmg file. All right, if we go down here, it should say it's still a .dmg. Yep, and then you're going to double click this. And it's going to say, please order, come on. And you can just go continue unregistered because we don't need it for much. And here it is. So this is your .power ISO. And you're going to see here, you have your two file archives. And right now you have your iPod Touch 4th Gen. And within here is the actual restore.ipsw, the file that we need. So all you have to do is right click and click extract. Now select where you want to save it to. You're going to click selected files. Choose here to choose where you want to put it. We'll put it on the desktop again. You're going to click OK. 
and you're going to click OK again. Now this takes not too long, remember it's a fairly large file so it's got to extract the whole thing. Give it a couple seconds and then you will be mostly done with this. And again this is fairly simple but not many people actually know how to extract the .ipsw from a .dmg so I decided I'd make this tutorial because this is one of the most common problems. Um, we're going to go minus there and then you'll see that right here we have the actual .ipsw file. So we have ipod 416.0 .ipsw. That right there is the file that you need to use on iTunes. Not the .dmg, but the .ipsw. If you've done it correctly, it's just going to show up as a white blank page because, again, it doesn't recognize the file. And then you can go ahead, go into iTunes, and do the install like you normally would, but be sure you use the .ipsw, the one that you've extracted using PowerISO, not one that you've changed the extension for. Now, that's basically it. The most common thing is people will get an error message return saying the firmware is not compatible or something along those lines, and that is because of the fact that you probably changed the extension on the original .dmg file. So again, do not change the extension if you have, I would suggest going back to 5.1.1 using my other video, then either re-downloading the .dmg file or make sure you change it back because it might already be damaged at that point. Re-downloading it using PowerISO, extract the .ipsw, and then go ahead and install the .ipsw, and that should give you almost no problems. At least if you get a problem, it will not be related to having the wrong file type or changing the, ex changing the extension. Again, if you get this firmware is not compatible or something along those lines, I'm guessing you're probably a Windows user and you probably changed your extension because that's what I found to be the most common problem. Alright guys, I want to make this video to help clear everything up for anyone. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, it works best if you send me an email support at iOS betas. I do sometimes reply to comments. I do check my Twitter all the time at iOS betas. Again, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.